Hello and welcome back everyone. In the last episode, we became heroes and just a tiny bit legends. And this one, we are going treasure hunting. We are very close to recipe for disaster, so let's get started. We start our journey by helping this woman whose daughter has gone missing in the desert. We have to follow some footsteps into this desert and lady, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news here, but there's a bunch of wolves out there. So I'm going to guess that she probably got eaten, but I guess not because we continue following these footsteps and we come across an encampment with some mercenaries posted out front. I'm sure nothing bad is going on here. I taunt this man into fighting me. You fucking weakling, you can't take me on my worst day. Do none of these guards care that I just killed their captain? Guess not. I loot this key and then I put back on my desert clothes so I don't raise any suspicion and then I enter into this camp. I end up talking to this guy over here and he tells me that this is a slave camp. Oh, that's that's real bad. That's not good at all. So if her daughter was caught, then she's going to be probably working in the mines here. I trade this man my clothes so I can infiltrate the base with even greater effect. We get into this cave right over here and come across a guard with a hankering for some sweet pineapples. Honestly, I get it. If we manage to get him one of those, he'll let us deeper into this section of the mine. So just hold on for a second. This guy fully thinks that I'm a slave. Where does he expect me to get this sweet pineapple from? I can't imagine they're just letting slaves walk in and out of this camp willy nilly, right? I leave the cave and this fucking old man gets me arrested. Thanks a lot. Well, I guess it works out. I make my escape over here and travel to this camp where I can barter my way into getting a pineapple. This man, Al Shabim, wants some valuable blueprints of a weapon located in Captain Siad's office. We head on over and he just lets us do some recon work right in front of him. Wild. The security here is honestly really lacking. You guys should probably fix that. Or not. You're slave owners. You're bad people. It looks like this guy is interested in sailing. Boy, oh boy, do I have some good news for you, my man. Sailing was just voted on recently. And guess what? It's coming to the game. Oh, really? I can't wait to train that skill. I just think sailing is going to be such a great addition to the core game of RuneScape. While the captain is distracted, I open this chest and grab the blueprints. With those in hand, I return to Al Shabim, and he asks us to create this new weapon. Oh, it's a dart. This must have been when they were introduced into the game, I guess. But my man, let me tell you, you're a little bit behind the times. Me too, but I guess here's your dart. We get the sweet pineapple and we return to the slave camp. Perfect. And yeah, I guess they just kind of let me in and out as I please. That's nuts. Like I said before, not a great security system. But once again, I'm not really going to try to improve the security system of slave owners. It's just not something I think is worth my time. We make our way back into the cave and we give the pineapple to this guard. He's now happy to let us into this deeper section of the mine. And now it's time for a prison break. We find the daughter, Anna, and we stuff her into a barrel. She's not very grateful, which is kind of annoying, but we help her out anyway. After getting her into the barrel, we're able to winch her out to safety. And with all of that taken care of, that's quest complete. Next up is the first quest in the troll storyline, Death Plateau. These soldiers over here are having trouble with the trolls wrecking their shit from above. So it's going to be up to me to try and find another way around. But before I can find the path, there's another larger issue at hand. Some dumbass guard lost access to the group's supply of weapons, 
and we need to try to figure out what the combination is so that they can access their weapons. We try to talk to him and he's a fucking mess. As it turns out, he's got this thing for drinking and gambling. So being the enabler that we are, so being the enabler that we are, I go and make him a drink that he fancies, a blurberry special. Making this thing is wild, by the way. I don't drink, so just seeing all the steps for some alcohol in a point and click adventure game is crazy to me. That's lots of attention to detail. I really like it. We get that done, we give this man some booze, and then we play a game of chance. Well, my luck is truly impeccable and there's no way I can look. fuck! Oh, but I guess he's hammered and he thinks he lost anyway, and he gives us an IOU. This fucking idiot wrote the IOU on a piece of paper that has the combination for the chest that we need. God damn it. We then need to talk to this guy who I think is being pinned down by the trolls. I really don't know, I wasn't paying too close of attention. But I made it in here no problem, and I, I don't know. Regardless, he tells us that we need to find a Sherpa, but he doesn't really know where the Sherpa is, according to him. That guy is literally 20 seconds away. He is a 20 second walk away. This man right here is useless. We talk to the Sherpa Tenzig, and he tells us that he has the key to traversing the troll area. It's spiked boots. It's boots that have spikes in them. I'm sorry. Did no one think to ask the man who's been living in the mountains what the best way to get around these mountains is? Am I going crazy? Am I insane? We make the boots and do a quick test run, and as it turns out, this path right here is great for bypassing the trolls. We let the captain over here know, and that's quest complete. Oh cool, we get claws, nice. Continuing with the trolls, Denleth needs our help once more. It turns out there are some guards who have been captured by the trolls, so we need to get them out of there. It's time to infiltrate and liberate. Making our way farther into the mountain, we need to kill Dad. No, really, we have to kill Dad in order to progress the quest. All right, so he dies, and now we can continue our infiltration deeper in. And fuck off, old man. You're going to blow my cover. Don't you see what's going on here? You pick the worst times to show up. Go away. We need to kill one of these generals for a key. And since these guards right down here seem to be asleep on the job, it is simple enough to pickpocket them and get these guys out of here and to safety. Mission complete. The last prerequisite for Desert Treasure is Temple of Ikov. This person, Lucian, needs a mercenary to retrieve the Staff of Armadil. So, being fully trusting of this shady person, we need to start on that right away. We first grab some boots over here, even though I don't think I really need them, but hey, new boots are cool. We are wearing my full graceful outfit because we need to weigh negative pounds over here because this bridge is real old and real shitty. I fix this lever over here and then I get to start a really bad game of Russian roulette. I need to search these chests to find some ice arrows in order to kill this special monster that can only be attacked or only be damaged by ice arrows, like ice weaponry, I think. Eventually, I do get the 23 that I need and then I get the fuck out of there. Run over, I kill this guy, I get teleported by this witch who needed a shitload of limpert roots for some reason, and then I find the base of the Guardians of Armadil. And I instantly switch sides because Lucian seems obviously evil, and then I go pull a cheeky little murder on them, but they bamf away and that's quest complete. Alright, it's finally time for the big boy, Desert Treasure. We take another carpet right over to the Badabin camp once more to find the archaeologist as Garnia Smith. I don't know if you could hear that in my voice, but I did air quotes when I said archaeologist. He's just a glorified treasure hunter, and he asks me if I want to split the loot on a pretty nice treasure that is the literal thing of legends. No, really, the four diamonds that we need to find, the diamonds of Azandra, are said to be nothing more than mere legends, but there are those that believe in their existence. One such person is Terry Belando, uh, better known as the archaeologist expert over in the dig site. He helps us decipher these etchings given to us from Smith, and with that translation, we return to the Bedabin and start asking around for anyone who may know a thing about these diamonds. This bartender tells me that my kind isn't welcome here. Rude. I'm just a treasure hunter trying to steal potentially priceless artifacts that have been ingrained in this area's mythology for so long that everybody knows their names and is part of their culture and history. I'm just trying to take that for my own benefit. 
Like that's such a bad thing. Regardless, we lie to these people and tell them that we're working on behalf of the Farrakh Museum. We manage to speak to Eblis, who gives us hope that these diamonds are the real deal, and he knows actually where one of them is located. Eblis creates a summoning circle with our help to conduct a spell that will give us the location of this first diamond, the smoke diamond. With the location acquired, I put on my finest armor. God, I look so sick. And I delve into the smoky well on the outskirts of Paul Nivnich. While in the dungeon, I need to light these pillars in a timely manner. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Perfect, that allows us access to this chest over here, which has a key in it, and then we face off against Farid. We take him down with relative ease, and that is one diamond acquired. The next diamond on our list is the Shadow Diamond. Talking to Rosolo just on the outskirts of Ardoin, we offer our help in retrieving an item that he wants back in exchange for a ring that will allow us to see the invisible. Being the near clairvoyant that we are, we know exactly where this item is located, and taking the proper precautions, I stock up on poison resists, food, and lockpicks, and get to work cracking this safe in the bandit camp. Fuck. Shit. Ass. God damn it. How many locks does this thing have? How valuable is this pendant? Perfect. First try. Returning to Rosolo, we give him his pendant back, and he gives us the ring. The door just so happens to be right behind where he was located, which is very convenient for us. The quest helper tells me to try and safe spot Damis by luring a bat or something, but let me tell you, I was not ready for this dungeon. I find Damis, but I am under attack by two monsters already, and by sheer fucking luck, honestly, I get him into this safe spot. I was almost positive that I was going to die down here, but as it turns out, I'm the fucking best at this game. And that's another diamond we've got, hell yeah. Next up, we have the Blood Diamond. All right, so I'm going to give you the TLDR of this uh, cutscene here real fast. Hello, my name is Malik. I'm a real piece of shit. I rule Canafis with Lord Draken, and I make these people's lives a living hell. Uh, Malik, sir, wh why are you collecting the tithe this time? Shut the fuck up, Rovar. I didn't ask you any questions, and you know not to ask them back. You, who the fuck are you? You don't look like you belong here. Um... Me? I'm just an I'm just an adventurer. I'm just looking for some diamonds. A diamond, you say? Well, I may have just the diamond in fact. Oh, can I can I have it? No, first you must do something for me that involves great danger and will be a gigantic pain in your ass. Great. Well, just fucking tell me what it is. Uh, but we need his help since he knows where the diamond is. In fact, he has it on his person. And he will give it to us if we agree to kill someone named Desous. Desou? I don't know if it's like French pronunciation. Since we are really in need of that diamond, we agree to help out. Malik tells us to gather some materials that will allow us to kill Desou. Talking to this really cool looking NPC, Rontun, he helps us create a silver pot. Now we have to take this to Intrana and get it blessed. Hey man, can you bless this, like, fucking pot for me? But of course, it seems like a totally normal thing to ask. Thanks, man. With the blessed pot, we take it back to Malik and create a nice little drink out of my own fucking blood and garlic powder. Mmm, sweet and garlicky with notes of iron. Delicious. We now gear up to fight Dassault. This guy was a little bit scary, but not too bad. I know that what I'm doing to kill these people is not optimal, but I got the kill anyway and was rewarded with the next diamond. One more to go. The last diamond is the ice diamond. We make our way all the way back up to the troll stronghold and talk to this little troll kid here. His parents apparently stole the diamond and were frozen as a punishment. That's rough. Okay, so as to not let this kid be an orphan, we agree to help him out. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Fuck this place. Fuck this place. Fuck this place. You can call me Illidan Stormrange because I was not prepared. That joke fucking sucks. We kill five trolls to gain access to the other section, and I make the smart choice of turning back and resetting my gear and stats. With mage gear and proper food and potions this time, I take on Camel. As it turns out, if anyone was wondering, the Iben's Blast is not a fire spell. So my question is, why does it use fire runes? 
No idea, but it took me a little bit too long to figure that out. Once I did though, it was smooth sailing to get the kill from that point. Moving past Camille, we traverse this nightmare bridge. Ow. Fuck, I keep falling, please. Someone help. And honestly, with zero trouble at all, I didn't fall on my face one time, I make it to the parents. Freeing them will reveal that this little fucking shit kid had the diamond the whole time. I mean, I guess good on him for keeping that close to his chest, but let's be honest here, I'm not above icing that little shit and looting his corpse. I'm not above it, I'll do it. But we have the last diamond and are close to completing this quest. We return to Eblis and he tells us to place each of the four diamonds on their respective altar at the pyramid over here. Now, it's time for the last gauntlet of the quest. We need to make our way to the top of the pyramid so that we can make our way all the way down to the bottom. There are four levels in this pyramid, and as you might have noticed, I forgot anti-poisons because I suck. I'm sure it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. This area is fucking rough, guys. Luckily, I only fell once during my entire run. I have no idea what the falling rate is in this zone, but I'm not going to question it. Navigating these mazes on the various levels, we get poisoned, and now it's a race to the bottom to see what gives out first. Running past and praying to whatever may be listening, we make our way to the bottom just barely. Truly, I was one hit away from death by the end of this. We enter into the room and now are speaking with the Azandra. They have no idea how long it's been since they died, and they think that the God Wars are still raging on outside. We assure them that they have long since passed and they eventually accept the truth. They thank us by giving us access to the ancient spellbook and a fat drop of magic XP. And that, my friends, is the last quest needed to complete Recipe for Disaster. And I think you all know that is where we are going to end the episode. It's been a long time coming, but we are right there. In the next episode, you all know what's happening. We are going to pay the Lumbered Chef a visit once more. So, until then, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.